Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about what you get paid for as a professional photographer. So you might be thinking you get paid to take great pictures. That's kind of true. I mean, the the ability to take great pictures, or let's say to have like really great pictures, let's say in your portfolio or on Instagram or whatever, um, that will help get you a job. Sure. I mean, if that's your portfolio um, and people see it, they might say, hey, I want to work with you and they're going to hire you and know oh, you get the job. But that's not really what they're paying you for, even if they don't really realize it. What they're paying you for is to be able to deliver the image they need when they need it reliably. Okay, that's what makes it a professional job versus a go out and shoot pictures until we get something that's good. So this kind of comes up because of a lot of different reasons. I get tons and tons of DMs about, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, how much should I charge? When should I go professional? What do I need to be professional? And I think in the end, it comes down to that. For whatever market you think you're going to want to break into, you need to be able to consistently produce images up to kind of the contemporary professional standard, I'll say. So, you know, well exposed, uh, probably not noisy, depending on what you're doing, uh, you know, good color, uh, and you gotta be able to do it no matter what, right? So, in the end, that's what matters, right? Because basically, a photo shoot is, the process of a photo shoot is oftentimes the one of problem solving. Right? Somebody comes to you with a problem. The problem is they need a photo of blah. Well, that may be as simple as, oh, okay, well, you want a, you know, a nice uh, portrait and there's a tree in my backyard and I can go out there with a long lens and you know, a fairly wide open aperture and a reflector and make a nice portrait of you and it'll be simple and it'll be done. Um, okay, that's fine. And if that's all you have, right, is your tree and your reflector and whatever, then you can, I suppose, start to make money or to shoot, right? If that's if somebody wants to pay you for it. But what happens when it's raining or snowing or dark out or many other things that could happen where they can't shoot outside? It's too hot. They're sweating, you know. Um, how do you handle those clients? Do you just not take the job? I mean, that's certainly an option, right? But I think if we want to consistently work as photographers, we need to be versatile, Right? So when somebody comes to you for a portrait and they uh, you know, want to be, you know, a nice portrait and they need to schedule the appointment at 8 o'clock at night and you want to be able to do that, well, you're going to have to light it somehow. Whatever that lighting might be, whether it be flash, whether it be constant light, whether it be whatever, you've got to be able to do it. Right? Um, so having that in your toolbox is going to expand the amount of clients that you can take and also how... Uh, how often you can shoot, basically. Because depending on what people want, um, if they want a simple LinkedIn profile photo or a photo for blah, 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 right, they don't necessarily care that it's in your backyard, even if that's what you've been showing, right? What they care about is they have a nice clean photo that's kind of up to the standards of the stuff they've seen you do. Now, if somebody specifically wants an outdoor photo, They'll be much more flexible, of course, about when they can do it. But if somebody just wants to shoot and they schedule an appointment, you know, two weeks in advance for one o'clock on a Wednesday, and then that day the weather's crappy, you know, you canceling on them is not going to bode well for your reputation. You've got to be able to overcome that. So this is where the technical comes in, right? When you're doing it as a hobbyist, you can kind of shoot whenever it's good for you and get whatever good shots you can get, but when you're a professional, you gotta be able to do it when the client wants you to do it. So, I often tell this story, I don't know if I've ever told it on this channel, uh, but I'll tell it anyways, because this was kind of super eye-opening to me. Um, I guess, hopefully, maybe I already knew this a little bit in the back of my head, um, but I was working as a photo assistant years ago in Miami, and <clears throat> we were hired to produce a catalog um, of children's pool toys. So it was like, you know, floats and stuff for pools. So, you know, um, and, you know, it was a pretty big budget thing. And basically, uh, you know, we, we had rented a large house with a pool. Um, you know, we had cast tons of models because, you know, with kids, you got to have extra models and they can only work for so long. We had the client flew in from out of state. There was stylists. There was all these other people involved. There was photo assistants. There was a photographer. So 
here we are, right? And I show up at the photographer's studio in the morning of the shoot, and it's raining. It's raining pretty bad, actually. And it's cloudy, and it's crappy, and, you know, and, and I'm thinking to myself, well, this is not going to bode well, right? Um, but he tells us, he's like, okay, load such and such equipment, flash equipment, uh, into the car. We loaded up all the stuff. We got to the house using uh, judicious use of uh, plastic bags and extension cords and the skill of the photographer, we were able to light up this pool to look like a bright sunny day. He used the Fresnel lights and we gelled them a little bit and he warmed the lens days of film. Um, and yet, no, it was raining. So we, we, you know, he figured out angles that he could use that would give the shots that the, the client wanted, but would not show the sky. And he made sure the kids were splashing around and stuff, which is what they wanted anyways, right? Um, to show lots of action. And if you were to look at this catalog, you would never know that it was a rainy, cloudy day. And that right there was like, wow, okay, that's what you gotta do to do that level of work. Because when somebody you know, has all this money on the line, they're paying for you to deliver. And you've gotta deliver no matter what. Now, you gotta figure out your own solution. Maybe it's not delivering exactly the initial uh, concept, you know, maybe it would have been nice to show the big bright sky or maybe some of the shots where the kids weren't splashing because, you know, it was a nice day and we could have done that. But uh, we delivered and it was great, you know. And the thing is that if we had just canceled, you know, the models would have got a kill fee. The, this, this, the, the location would have still had to be paid for. The caterer would have got a kill fee. Like, it's not like we could have just canceled this thing and walked away. So at that level of work, you know, you've got to be able to deliver every time. And to a lesser extent, this is true no matter what you do, right? There are some things you just can't reschedule. Now, there's other times where you need to do something very specific. Like, I remember once we did this job and they wanted portraits of these people um, in the desert. Now, of course, it probably was unlikely to rain in the desert. So, um, But we flew out to a location and they wanted these people in this desert. Now, if, if they, with the, you know, the, the landscape behind them and we brought out, you know, uh, uh, battery-powered lights. I think we used Norman 400Bs back then. And... Um, we needed to shoot in that desert at that certain time of day and that's what we needed to do it so that was the 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 achievement there was to make sure that everybody was up in the morning that we had the right vehicles and in fact on that job we were had to like go full wheeling to get out there and and a couple trucks got stuck and we ended up having to load stuff into different trucks and you know when we got there and we did the shots on location and this kind of thing right th this you have to do there so if we had let's say shown up and it was like oh no we can't shoot because it's the one rainstorm a year in this desert you know, we would have had to postpone it. And that, and that was, uh, in a job like that, where you have to use the location and it has to be shot during a certain time of, like, certain certain kind of weather, um, you're going to want to budget um, extra days, you know, and you just put that in there. It's basically like an insurance policy. You just tell the client that, listen, we got to pay, you know, we got to tell the models up front, they're going to have to put these days on hold and they're only going to shoot on one of them and the other days they get a half fee or whatever it might be. Um, you got to do that because that's the only way you know you can shoot during those hours. So... You know, this is the way that kind of stuff works. But um, again, going back to a more simple uh, process, if you're just starting, right, uh, or whatever you're doing, when somebody comes to you and they say, I have this thing that needs to be done, and you say, okay, I can do it, and they put money down on it, you know, you better deliver. And there's a reason why some people get paid more than others. Um, and it isn't always about that they're a, quote, better photographer. What it comes down to usually is that they've got a great reputation of being able to deliver always. And the product that they deliver has a reputation of working for the client. So if you think about it like this, let's say in New York, we have a lot of um, headshot photographers, right? That's a pretty big, pretty big market here. And if you look, there's a range. There's people that do it for like a hundred bucks and there's people that the, the higher end guys get 15, 16, 100, even more to do it. You know why? What's the difference there? Do they use better equipment? I mean, they probably do. Um, you know, most people are going to buy the best equipment they can buy uh, based on their budget because better equipment generally is more reliable. And again, it comes down to the reliable thing. But that's not really it. What it really comes down to is that they have a reputation, a reputation of being able to deliver a product 
that works for the client. And, and in the case of a headshot photographer, they probably have worked with people who have gotten gigs from the headshots, for instance, right? Uh, this is a proven track record. This helps you get paid. Uh, I could specifically go into different types of markets, and we could talk about those in, in you know future videos if you guys want. Um, leave some comments below. Let me know what you think. Do you like this kind of businessy type video? Do you want to have more specific um, examples of certain markets, like what I might suggest you might do, um, and that kind of thing. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, ring the bell, and I'll see you next time.